Hey guys, welcome to my mukbang. So, to start, I went to Starbucks and as a certified ex barista, I wanted to introduce to you guys a drink that I used to make at Starbucks all the time. This is a vanilla bean frappuccino with caramel sauce on the inside. It's also really good as strawberries and cream frappuccino with caramel sauce on the inside, as Starbucks girls used to make this all the time. This is bomb. I know a mukbang is supposed to be a bunch of different foods that you've never tried before, but I'm probably sure you guys haven't tried this little concoction. Oh yeah, I forgot, I just remembered this. If you take a strawberries and cream frappuccino and mix hazelnut with it, it tastes exactly like Captain Crunch. Get you some. <laughs> All right, so I know what this one tastes like. I got a, um, this is made with almond milk, a SPF. Um, why did I get SPF? I can't remember, this was a while ago. Maybe I'll be able to. I taste, I taste caramel. I can't remember, it's some new flavor that they have, it's okay. It has a little bit of a weird aftertaste. I know I need to know the name of it in order for you guys to know what I'm talking about, but I will look at what it is when I leave and tag it down below. So that's okay. I would not order it. I would get a caramel frappuccino or again, the vanilla. This one's so bomb. And when you get the caramel chunks, it's so good. Like the little chunks of caramel, you gotta take the straw and dip it down and you get that and it explodes in your mouth. It tastes so good. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, what's this one? The Almond Milk SBC. So, I know there, it must be, I don't know, let me try it. I'm so glad I ordered it a while. There's no, I asked for no whipped cream because I wanted to actually taste the flavor. I'm not big on whatever this SB, whatever is. I need a napkin. I don't know. Of course, no napkins. And they sent no utensils with my Cheesecake Factory order. Thank you very much. But they did find my room. <laughs> okay, so when I ordered from Cheesecake Factory, I love Cheesecake Factory. I ordered something I stuff I have never tried before. Um, I, what I do get from Cheesecake Factory is I get the miso salmon. I get it dry with the miso glaze on the side with brown rice. And I also really like their um, the appetizers, the Thai chicken wraps. But I don't really eat chicken anymore. But if it's made like that, I'll eat chicken. I've like unintentionally become pescatarian. I, I can't eat, when I think about all the chicken I used to eat, I used to probably eat a bird a day. It's like disgusting me. I just can't do chicken anymore. Ugh. I get a nice coffee with two extra shots, almond milk, no sweetener, and I put the whole earth sweetener in it. That's my drink. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm -mm. Move aside, move aside. You were not good. This is good. We will keep you. Okay, so something that's pretty popular, you've probably been seeing these on a lot of different menus, um, buffalo style cauliflower. Cauliflower is making a huge hit. If you guys haven't tried any of the cauliflower pizzas, bomb! I probably eat one of those almost every day, every other day. Sweet Earth has a really, really good one. It's in a black box. I like the protein lovers. It's made from plant protein. It's like mostly all, all organic. It's bomb. I love it. Um, okay, so this cauliflower comes with ranch and a slice, a lemon wedge. Not sure what the lemon wedge is supposed to do. Mmm. It's mushy. It's, it's delivery, so it's probably tastes better. Mm, I can see how it would taste good there just not delivery. Mm, it's got like green onion on it. The flavor is really good. It's not, and it's pretty thinly breaded. 
cauliflower has the worst smell to it, like ever. Worse than broccoli, right? Right. So that's okay. Um, I don't know why they sent me a wheat bun, <laughs> but they did. They sent me a wheat bun. Just plain wheat bun. It's all better. I need napkins. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, you know what's so good from there? So this doesn't really count as something I've never tried either, but it's the strawberry lemonade. And when you get it there, they put sugar on top. It's so good. I love their ice green teas with the mint. It's so sweet though. Oh my God, so sweet. Uh, gross. I'm not used to sweet food, it's so sweet. But it's yummy, oh my God, on a hot summer day. This is good. <laughs> I spilled all over myself. Oh my God, okay. <clears throat> Here we have the this is tomato basil uh, pesto pasta, tomato basil pasta. I was really hoping it was gonna look a lot better. I asked for it with no chicken. I really need it. Again, this is delivery and it's not been sitting here that long, but I love tomato and I love basil and I love mozzarella cheese. really good mm. oh my god that's really good mm, i would like that it's like it's so comforting tasting it's good even been sitting here for like five minutes okay i gotta stop doing that and this, this is really good the fried mac and cheese balls you guys have never had the fried mac and cheese balls from cheesecake factory you are seriously doing yourself a disservice go and try some so good once again, oh my God. It comes with marinara sauce. This is what the inside looks like. Little fried. <laughs> I gotta leave a good tip for these clean ladies. <laughs> mm, okay, so let's try it. I wonder how they make these things. So perfect. They're so good. And you know what? They're actually, they reheat good. Cause I, you probably can't eat all this one. I can eat like one ball in a sitting. I mean, you probably can't eat much more, but they do reheat in the microwave very well. And if you want to really get stoner with it, you just put it in the oven, put it on like 400 and they get crispy again. Mm. Mm. It tastes like grilled cheese mac and cheese grill like it like if it was this grill i don't know it just tastes no one can touch that no one can touch fried mac and cheese balls from Tuesday factory okay last thing i got was one of their belgian waffles because it is still breakfast time um it comes with some strawberries this syrup Actually, my favorite breakfast food is probably French toast. Yes. French toast is the best. I'm just going in it with my hands because. Oh, it smells so good. Mm, I love fucking. I can say that I gotta beat that out. How can you do a mukbang without using the word F though? Especially if the food's good, right? Like, oh, it looks like it's got butter and syrup in here. Oh. Go to the gym so hard. Mmm. 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 Mm. I just want to like savor it. Mm. Oh. Okay, so so far, the best thing is that waffle. It's the best thing. I really don't know what this SBF is. But no. No. Gotta go. No good. Winner winner chicken dinner. Waffle dinner. 
chicken and waffles. Ooh, that would've gone good. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed my little mukbang. I was supposed to do a Q and A with it. I did just realize I'll answer some of your questions. <laughs> Okay, so my name, obviously, if you don't already know, I am Riley Steele. Hey, what's up, how you doing? Um, I am from San Diego, California, North County, San Diego. I grew up in Escondido. Um, yeah, I went to, I went to, even though I grew up in Escondido, I went to San Marcos High, and like my sophomore year, because I lived in Escondido, um, they like basically kicked me out of San Marcos High, so I just did homeschooling from sophomore year on, which meant I really didn't do school because I had the answer keys to everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, my very first scene was in Pirates 2. I met Jesse Jane at the Hustler signing in San Diego for Pirates, the very first Pirates. And I was only 17 at the time, and my friend stuck me in there, and when I met her, I couldn't even speak because she was so freaking hot in real life and so was Carmen Lubano. She was there and she's like, you should be a porn star. You're fucking, you're so hot. And the girls were like all over me and I was 17 years old, you know, no boobs, nothing. I was like, oh, oh, oh my God. And the owner of Digital Playground at the time was there, Ali June, and um, he gave me his business card and he's like, well, when you're 18, give me a call. And I was like, what, I was kind of with my boyfriend. He was like away. He was he wasn't he was away, so I was kind of waiting for him. And um, when he got out, we were together, and then we broke up. And I still really wanted to be in porn, and I still had my dreams of being a digital playground girl. So I contacted June, and my girlfriends drove me up there um, to Van Nuys, and I actually made him meet me in the street because <laughs> I didn't believe that the office was the digital playground office. Because <laughs> when you drive up to LA from San Diego, you see the vivid office, you know, and like you think that the digital playground office is gonna look like, wow, you know, too. But it was a shack in Van Nuys. And when I say shack, I mean shack. It was by like this place called Beeps. It was in straight, the straight ghetto. I was like, this cannot be digital. Well, if you're really, June, meet me out in the street. So him and his wife came out and met me in the street. I was like, oh, okay, I'll go inside now. And I went inside and then they had all these pictures of all their covers and all their girls. Once you got inside, you're like, whoa. And it, it was just like, so not intimidating, but it was like, this is what I want. This is what I want to be. I want to be desired. I want to be a sex symbol. Like that's what I wanted my whole life. And that kind of goes into the next question I was asked is, what were my goals before porn, before I got into porn. And honestly, like ever since I was very, very young, I just knew I wanted to be a sex symbol. symbol. <laughs> I knew I wanted to be desired. I knew I wanted to express myself in a sexual way. And um, I mean, I knew, I knew what masturbating was since I can remember, honestly. I, since like preschool, I used to get in trouble for masturbating because the teachers thought there was something wrong with me. And honestly, I I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew it felt good. And um, yeah, that I don't know how people are gonna take that, but it's the truth. And I'm sure there are other kids that have done it. So maybe you guys can relate to that, but I don't, I think it's an innocent thing. You know, you don't know what you're doing. You don't, it's not bad, cause it's not a bad thing. Um, it just felt good to me and I, I've always known what that was. And then when I discovered, like I, I remember my first idol was like Carmen Electra, Pamela Anderson. And then I discovered, I started getting deeper into it and it was um, Jenna Jameson. When I read, like it takes a lot for me to pay attention to something long enough to, I don't even have a show on Netflix I binge because I lose my, my, I get very sidetracked. I don't care about a lot of things and I have to really, really care. I read that Jenna Jameson book in like a day. It may, may or may not be an easy read. The point is, is I, I was fascinated. I loved it. I felt it. Like I, I understood that pain and I understood that feeling of being, wanting to be wanted. And, um, 
I, I just really, really connected and uh, I, I didn't ever grow up with a mom. My mom walked out when I was born, basically. My mom was only 17 when she had me and my dad was very young too, but I don't, and I don't hold any anger towards my mom for what she did and not, not being there for me my, growing up. Um, because I think when I was 17, if I were to have had a baby, I wouldn't have been able to handle it either. And I'm lucky to be here. I'm happy to be here. I love my life. So, um, I, there's really no resentment I hold towards her for that, but there's my ADD again. <laughs> um, yeah, so I never really wanted to be anything, but what I'm doing now, I, it's, it, this is just how I've always been. Um, <sighs> what are my favorite cheap snacks or comfort foods? My favorite comfort foods, pizza and ice cream, of course, but like I eat the, um, the Halo Top or the vegan uh, cauliflower pizza because honestly eating bad food does not make me feel good. Like. I don't feel good going and eating some McDonald's or Jack in the Box, even though I love Jack in the Box. Um, if you've tried their churro sticks, oh, so good. Um, but yeah, I don't binge on bad food. I don't like bad food because it does not make me feel good. It makes me feel good to eat healthy food. Okay, well, I will take that back because processed cheese does for some reason make me feel good, like those Ritz crackers. Okay, that'll be my answer. Those Ritz crackers, the cheese ones. I like just lick the cheese or, or I take it and I double stuff them. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, I don't want to talk about my favorite kind of scene. Um, where did I grow? What's my ethnicity? I get this question so many times, like a lot. I get this and I've answered it already. My mom is uh, French and Spanish. That's where I get my amazing attitude from. Um, and my dad is, uh, my dad's German. Italian, all those countries over there, Eastern European. I want to ask him what he is, but I feel like he'd be like, why do you want to know so bad what you are? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna, I want a 23 me. I want to do 23 me really bad. Um, let's see what else. These are questions I have for other girls. Oh yeah. What if a bird flew in here? Oh my god, I would I'm terrified of birds. <sighs> oh no, I put him on my other phone. That's the one that's recording! No! <laughs> Let's see. do I look for in a friend? What do I look for in a friend? I look for loyalty. I look for someone who is honest, someone who likes to be healthy, someone who's adventurous, spontaneous, likes to have fun, who doesn't take things too seriously, who likes to laugh. I'm accepting friend applications. I don't really don't want a boyfriend. I learned that I really don't miss having a boyfriend. I do, however, find myself like praying to God, please, will you just send me someone, a friend, someone to hang out with, someone to work out with, someone to go to Starbucks with, someone to get my nails done with, go to the spa with. I'm just so mad. Favorite cheat meal we did, that favorite genre of TV show, anything that's gonna make me laugh. Um, I do like, like the, uh, I really got into the OJ Simpson trial, the, the Versace one on Netflix, okay. So those are the only shows that I've, I've ever really watched. And then I found Sex Education, season one, bomb. Loved it so much. I put my phone down, nothing really besides Shannon Jameson, how to, make a how to make love like a porn star. Nothing besides Sex Education has made me put my phone down and get off of Instagram, get off of Twitter. But season two, I'm not feeling it. I watched like a few episodes and I have not found myself back in bed watching it. I'm sorry guys, the mom's hair needs to go back to being that white color. She was so much hotter when she looked older, right? Now, I, I don't know. 
Ugh, I thought I blocked my ex. Ugh. Anyways, where's my questions now that everything's messed up? Okay. my questions now. <laughs> they know it's time for me to check out. They're like, send the birds in on her. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. I like Bojack Horseman. I like, <laughs> um, uh, what's that one show? I like adult comedies, Adult Swim, I love, I also love Bravo. Sometimes I used to super be into Housewives, but I cannot, I cannot listen to women yell and fight like that. I mean, sometimes I can take it, but I don't know anymore. If you could do anything or go anywhere in the world, what would you like to do? Um, honestly, I like being home. I like working out. I like shooting content. I like being on schedule. I like doing self care things. I like, I just like taking care of myself and just doing things that make me feel good and happy. I like being outdoors sometimes when there's not crazy animals, you know, and I have SPF. I like to be outside. <laughs> Other than that, I'm an indoors girl. <laughs> the window is wide open. <laughs> What do I want from life? What do I want from life? I just want to find true eternal happiness. I want to be a good person. I want the people in my life to find happiness within me and comfort and a friend in me. I want to be good to the people that are in my life. I want to be a support. I want to ch help change girls' lives. Like. Um, that's something I, that honestly, deep down is what I truly, the same way I, <laughs> I discovered Jenna Jameson and all my sex symbols growing up. I know me as a young girl, I, what I looked up to and what I desired is probably the same thing, if not even more what these girls who are in high school now, you know what I mean? And, and the way that social media is, I think it's probably even more deeper into the sex world and wanting to be a sex symbol. And I just want to be an inspiration for even the girls that are in the industry now. And if they do look up to me, um, I've been through everything you could go through in this industry pretty much. I have I was so sheltered my entire career being with Digital Playground and um, then with Axel Braun and now finally being on my own and being able to um, not have anyone be a middleman, I guess, and not have anyone uh, talking for me, so to speak. Um, I can have my own voice now. Um, I'm not under contract, meaning I can finally make money that I deserve to make. I went through the first, all up until OnlyFans and Snapchat came around, I was living broke. My, all the years I was working for Digital Playground, all these people thought I was making money, I was rolling in the cash, like people think I've made so much money. I was sitting on the floor crying because I couldn't afford food or a bottle of freaking water. I'm with no furniture, like, I just want all these girls to know. I mean, up until, again, up until so recently, has it not, have, have things been so hard? And maybe things look good, maybe, people try and portray what you see on Instagram. Um, you know, all the people who look up to all these people who, it's just not real. And I just hope that I can be someone real for young girls to look up to and show girls that you can come out of the hardest, deepest, darkest, most embarrassing things you can do in this industry, in the world, in life, and still walk away holding your head up high and at the end of the day, making everything okay. Um, something that I've learned and something maybe that you've always heard, I know you've always heard this and we're always, we've always been told this is 
what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And having always heard this, I finally understand this. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger because if it don't kill you, you've got to go through it. And once you go through it, you learn so much, you grow from it. And if it doesn't kill you, you become stronger or it kills you and it doesn't matter. So there's my little mukbang, my little Q&A. I hope you guys learned something. I'm gonna go check out if these birds don't kick me out first. So hope everyone has a great day. Oh yeah, subscribe and like my video.